actual size. It's big, but it's not quite as big as I would think they are. Go first to the ship graveyard. So a look inside the capsule. in here I can't even sit oh I think you have to lay on your back like this I'm in it wrong oh yeah I can't even fully sit in here Ooh. especially in a spacesuit no way the different I, I wish I knew the names of all these these things oh they have plaques on them the Atlas rocket the Delta I brought my sunglasses and my eyes are the first challenge let me wow look at the size of this one oh my Hello, spacecraft. Even tinier, I think, than the other one. Try and fit in. This is the size. Crazy. Oh man, I don't even know what's in here. I think this is the building with all like today's space stuff. Oh, it smells really good in here. Oh, how it keeps cool. That's crazy. Oh man. That actually go into space? That's crazy. Oh, it looks like it might have. Artemis to scale. Station. Oh, is it? Oh. 
Oh man, oh the the dragon. Yeah. Oh man, 2020. We saw that launch from our house, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. marks and stuff. Oh, I just want to go and look, uh, look inside and see the size of it. In there. Oh man, that's, that's actually kind of spacious. It, it does have a, quite a bit of room. Boeing, that's cool. Models of different shuttles to different scales. Oh look, oh these are the different pieces. The exterior, the tile. Huh. different things they have the different theaters and shows and stuff different capsules you can try and get into hmm. I think we'll do the bus thing now that's probably the longest thing yeah that's the world's largest NASA shop you can get all the patches and the coins oh yeah the pins are cool we might have to get a pin and the coins oh look at the models of the ships those are sweet those are cool the, the, the Falcon 9 shirts are cool and, and the dragon shirts those are cool Oh man. Got the rover over. Oh man, they actually drove it around. They drove around in the farm again. <laughs> Extreme temperature differences between the air and the sun. 
sub-zero fuel cause the metal skin of the rocket to expand and contract. Everyone was on the pad agreed. It was as though the rocket was alive, breathing, straining at the leash. Earlier in the morning, astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders had made their final preparations before taking that long ride out to the waiting spacecraft. The minimum safe distance from Saturn V at liftoff was three miles. The reason was simple. When fully fueled, the rocket contained the explosive power of an atomic bomb. As the clock counted down, the astronauts and all of us in launch control went through the pre-flight checks, our hands on the controls of the most powerful, most complex machine ever built. It had over two million separate systems, and to bring these men back alive, everything had to work perfectly. Each individual system had been tested, but what we didn't know was how they would perform when all two million began to work together. That moment would come when the countdown clock reached zero. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring, circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders would pay with their lives. As they sat, Waiting for launch on that chill December morning, these three astronauts were back to what they had always been, test pilots. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced.
transfer. We're now on the flight batteries within the launch vehicle. Final reports coming from Frank Borman at this time. Final look at the switch list aboard the spacecraft. 20 seconds, all aspects. We are still in go at this time. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. The recognition sequence start. The engines are on. Inside here, oh, very, very claustrophobic. You can get a sense of a football field's length of rocket. Jesus. I got a really cool arm shot. Yeah. Space pen. Ah. <laughs> the space pen. Walk under, it. Walk under the rocket. Three hundred feet long. Even the model of it is big. Well, they have some more. Oh, there's a Snoopy. Yeah, I think they might have more Snoopy stuff. We'll have to look. Oh, and the Moon Man. Where? MTV. Oh, that's cool. Statue. I think we gotta go to the other side. Oh, yeah, this is the second Seven. part of it. They fit together, but it's cool. Look at different segments. Oh, the 
different pieces. Snoopy! Oh, there's the vault with the moon stuff in it. Okay. Oh. So this vault, I guess, has moon rocks in it, which I want to see the moon rocks. Oh, here it is. Lunar sample. That is a piece of the moon. Right there. Probably the closest I'll ever be to a piece of the moon. Oh, the flight plan. That's pretty cool. I don't know what any of it means. Another lunar sample. Yes, that's crazy. That's actually a piece of the moon. Well, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Yeah. Checklist and pen. Oh, the containment vessels for the moon rocks. Service metal. Looks like like an old school knife. Mm -hmm. Like a deep sea diver or something. Similar to Dragon. Very tight in there. Look at just all the stuff that we break. And I love seeing all the different thruster ports and stuff. Still more rocket to go. This is stage one, I guess. Oh, you can go and see 
inside the cockpit you see the very tip There's a decent amount of space in there for all your different uh, man. There's the very tip of it. Hi, I'm Charlie Duke, astronaut, Apollo 16. He's a lunar module pilot, so the first man to land on the moon. Uh, I also worked on uh, four of the other missions in Apollo. Okay. I worked in mission control at Capcom and Apollo 10. Oh man, you can touch you can touch a piece of the moon. I guess you gotta touch a piece of the moon. You can't come here and not touch the moon. Lunar sample. Oh man, let's get it on. Very smooth, probably from all the people touching it. Uh, older than the surface of the earth. That's crazy. I didn't know you could touch the moon. We touched a piece of the moon. Touched a piece of the moon. Oh, and here's a. The, dis the display of the landing. That's cool. All the all the boot prints oh, yeah. and, and the flag and the moon lander. Right, and then they make their way. They undock from the command and service module. They make their way down. To the all right, now that's the part where the lunar theater kicks in. So I'm going to skip over that part. New space, giving it some time. Anybody? Yes, that's right. Tranquility base here. Eagle has landed. Now, what's the eagle? It's the call sign for the lunar mine. NASA van. That's the van they took to go to the to the launch. Pretty cool. The astronaut van. That's what they saw. Whew. Not exactly a ton of comfort in there. Huh. That's cool. You like mist? I don't know. Oh, it's like a walking to the... Oh, that's cool. It makes it look like you're up high. Oh, do you feel the wind? Ooh, it's cold. It's cold going to the space station. The Apollo program, 72. Yeah, not too, too bad couple days like that and all the extra stuff you want to you want to spend a couple days like that Get a nice shot of the landing in this hole and so this little piece right here was right there and i guess turned into this and landed on the moon oh, yeah. great Moon water? Oh man. Drink water from the moon? Improving the reliability of SpaceX's crew transportation system. With the success of Demo 2, SpaceX is now sending crews to the ISS. Boeing spacecraft, the CST-100 Starliner, has also undergone orbital flight tests in order to send crews to the space station. It's able to see up to seven astronauts and cargo. Starliner launches top of Atlas 5 
made by the United Launch Alliance was in LA. Upon its return to Earth, rather than splashing down in the ocean, Starliner oh, yeah, deployed an air to land in the desert of the western yeah. United States. Starliner was actually the first American-made human-rated capsule to have landed on land. On September 4, 2009. Okay, that's really big. That is very huge. Think, but that lifts up into space. <laughs> this is what I might be most excited for seeing now. Let's see. The gift shop. Yeah, the different store. The Atlantis, this is what I'm most excited to see, I think. They don't look that big in video. There's a wedding reception. Oh. Have your wedding under the Atlantis? Uh, it was multiple failures that happened. That was so fun. <laughs> that is crazy. When I think of NASA, like, that's the, sp the spaceship I think of. Like, yeah. With the orange thing, the back of it. Like, that was actually in space a bunch of times. Like, crazy. It's one of the engines. It looks like just a big car engine. But there's three of those. The different, all the different tile marks. Yeah. Payload bay door tube cutter. Like, um, what'd that cost? Four hundred bucks. It looks like a plastic. What does he say? A plastic spoon or something like that? In the, um, the movie uh, oh, Armageddon, okay. when he's like, what does that cost? $400? It looks like a plastic a cheese scoop or something. Oh, a plastic ice cream scoop. A plastic, plastic ice cream scoop, yeah. Like, what? I know. The cross section of it. That's crazy. Well, it's just, it's That's just insane. insane. But it's actually just sitting right there. Come on, come on, guys. Come on. 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 They lifted up parts of the Hubble telescope, which I guess is why it's... Look at the little... That's really cool. Imagine just floating in space with that. Yeah, 
2.5 million parts. Oh, here's a cool. Twenty six years, thirty three missions. Wow. Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. You can crawl through like it's the ISS. Oh, we didn't take the slide slides down. Spacesuits. Oh man, a bathroom and workout machines. Oh look, uh, uh, and it's vertical. Yeah. Oh yeah. How they would eat. Sleep, and then they start floating off. Little pods. Well, your colleague would float off and he's sleeping. <laughs> and you get you getting in like a sleeping bag, so you That's don't so you don't float away. Yeah, not too bad. Video. I'm gonna go over by the scale model. Yeah, it looks like they're doing an event here or something. <laughs> that'd be cool. Look at we are standing under it right now, just casually walking under something that's been to space a million times. These tires flew. Look, these tires flew. Damn, they're like hard. Yeah. It's not even like rubber, it's like. Oh, Michelin. <laughs> Journal tanks. Uh, seven crew. You can control. Detaching the orbiter, the joystick with. Look, you can. Go ahead and lift it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's when they flew it on top of another plane. There you go. Oh, yeah. Way. I never stopped. Welcome. Huh. Crazy, crazy stuff. Oh, there's it. Huh. Oh, 
Oh, and the orange suit. Yeah, that's a pretty famous one. The orange. Oh yeah. And the ISS. Very tight. Tight squeeze. Shuttle launch experience. I'm all set. Oh, that's where that's what we saw in the video where you, it's like a simulator. Space shuttle tunnel adapter. Oh, that's not too narrow. <laughs> not too bad. Oh yeah, over there is all the training simulating stuff. Take a quick peek at that. Oh, another Astro van. Now they ride in Teslas. Oh, different, different games and simulators you can do to try and Oh. oh, it's over there. The um, I wanted to see the Hall of Fame. See the Hall of Fame. Let's see where the oh. Hmm. There's all the missions. That's cool. Challenger. The Fallen Friends and Heroes of Challenger and Columbia. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Pictures of them and everything. Crazy. This is of the spaceship, the Challenger. Oh, wow. That's an actual piece. And then the looks like the window of the Columbia. Dang. 2003 that was? I was 12 years old? Oh man, I wasn't born yet then. <laughs> <laughs> 